All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, the citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. Myself and Brother Shane are coming back from South Carolina. I wanted to answer a, a, a question that comes to me, and this is way off of the norm um, for me. I usually talk about things, social, political, economics, health, and then whatever else I feel like talking about. But um, they was asking me about um, Peyton Manning and quarterbacks. And of course, you know, they asked the question, Pastor Dow, do you believe that since Peyton Manning broke Brett Favre's, um, you know, uh, I think what it is like 70,000 70, something yards, you know, that they've uh, passed for in their illustrious career? Do you think he's the best quarterback? Or, and also, what do you think about the quarterbacks of today? And of course, I know a, modern, a lot of you modern day people, you're, you're, you're getting ready to get really mad at Pastor Dow. Uh, first of all, I do not think that Peyton Manning or Brett Favre are the best quarterbacks that have ever played in the NFL. Matter of fact, I don't think they are nowhere near, uh, probably not even in my top. I know they're not in my top five at all. Uh, and the reason being, and don't get upset at me, all you NFL fans and uh, fans of sports and stuff. First of all, you know, Pastor Dow don't follow sports like I, I used to when I was younger and stuff. Every once in a while, I'll get on YouTube. Um, and I'll check out, you know, what's going on with some of the um, uh, college teams, you know, because there's a lot of people that upload a lot of stuff. As well as I will also check out, um, you know, uh, ESPN a little bit, see what's going on in the world of sports, because a lot of times they have a lot of things going on, such as nowadays these terrorists, uh, they're nothing more than modern day drug dealers, uh, are blowing up stadiums and stuff and everything, and, and people are blowing up bombs around people and stuff so i may add some commentary on that but let me give you the reasons why that i do not believe that peyton manning or brett Favre are the best quarterbacks uh, they actually ever played in the nfl even though uh, they have records first of all uh, number one they both only have one super bowl win a piece that's it um peyton manning has one brett Favre has one if you're going to marry a champion by a champion um, then what you would do is measure them by championships and not how much uh, money they're getting paid or how many yards they break. Uh, number two, um, while, now listen to me, I'm not saying that they're not good quarterbacks. I'm just saying they are not the best quarterbacks, even though they have records in the NFL or, the, or what the NFL's ever had. If you go back and if you look at, or if you, you know, go on Amazon and order some of these older football games, if you go and look at some of these older football games, and uh, let me give you a time frame. I give you a couple of them. Uh, when Bart Starr, um, when Joe Gillum, uh, Terry Bradshaw, Roger Stahlberg, Joe Montana, Dan Marino. When you go back and look at those guys, Fran Tarkenton, um, uh, what, what was the name of that one? Uh, Archie Manning. You go back and look at those guys when they played the quarterback position. The quarterback was not um, a protected player. He was a player like anybody else on the field. And you really had to be a special kind of man to play quarterback during those eras. <laughs> because those guys, they took a beating of their life. And then for them to get up and to keep on ticking, those guys were men of men of men. And today's quarterbacks are just simply not built like that. Who do I personally believe is the greatest quarterback? Um, I probably Joe Montana. Um, then I would probably go with Terry Bradshaw, and that's only based on championships. Um, my probably the best passer of all time would probably be Dan Marino. Um, and now I, I'm coming from an old school perspective again, um, and you you can say the same thing about the receivers too. Go back and look at those video games. I mean video games, excuse me. Go back and look at those games. When you saw these quarterbacks and you saw these receivers back then, they took whoopings. <laughs> I mean, to be a receiver and catch a pass a long, long time ago, you literally had the cornerback piggybacking on you, all over you in order to catch the ball. And these quarterbacks, oh, man. See, today, if you touch a quarterback, you get a penalty. Um, they are protected species on that football field. 
Uh, I mean, people get fined for hits on quarterback. Helmet to helmet, that was a normal occurrence on a normal occasion in football. It was just part of it. That's the reason why he had a helmet on. Sure, people are suffering from it now with all the concussions and stuff, but what I'm saying, I'll, I'll put it like this. Our backyard football was tougher than what the NFL is today. And most of you, have, if you have never played backyard football, <laughs> I remember when I was in 82nd and we used to play um, tackle football. You know, we used to go down, you have one company and they have some people out there and we meet up on a Sunday morning and we have, have our bandanas on and we just get after it. The only referees was the, us out on the field. We didn't like the call, we started fighting. <laughs> That's the way it was. <laughs> but we played football. Of course, you know, the general made a stop because too many people was going to sick call Monday morning because of broken arms, broken legs, uh, fractures, uh, sprains. And so he made us stop. He made everybody stop and said that if anybody uh, continued on with this uh, tackle football stuff, uh, then he was going to give them an Article 15. So that's a good way to motivate a soldier to stop playing tackle football. But tackle football then, I'm telling you, it is a whole lot rougher. It's just kind of like almost like rugby. It, and it was rougher than rugby because you got all of us out there, um, we're thinking that we're Lester Hayes and Lawrence Taylor <laughs> and Dick Buckus. <laughs> and we don't, we're don't. we not paying for no money, but you would have thought that we, we was getting paid $10 million a year to play. That's because we had heart. And it's, you know, men today are just a total different breed of men than what we were going up. We were rough. We were just flat out rough. And so was that era that I'm talking about in football. These were some rough people. I mean, these were some rough men. And so that is the reason why that I say that today's quarterbacks pale in comparison to the quarterbacks of old. Um, can they throw the ball? Sure. But i give an example. You put Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, and Brett Favre. Now, Brett Favre probably could have made it because that, he was an iron man of a quarterback, no doubt about it. He, you know, there's nobody that's been able to beat that football streak as far as uh, games played uh, without missing. And that's something to be said. And that's something to be said. That is something. But you put them in that era back there in the late 70s, the early 80s, or even in the mid 80s, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, hey, they couldn't even stay on the field. Uh, they would be out if not their careers cut extremely short because today they're used to not getting hit. And if they do get hit, they get up crying and can on and all this old other stuff. But they just simply cannot take the punishment and the abuse that Dan Marino, and he threw for 5,000, hey, when he threw for 5,000 yards then, Hoo-wee. When Dan Marino threw for 5,000 yards then, he threw for 5,000 yards because they didn't have all these rules and all these regulations protecting them and the receivers. They didn't have all that. Um, I'm telling you, it was just rough back then. Of course, you know, most people are going to disagree with me, especially if you're not from our era because you just simply don't know. You simply don't know. Are the athletes bigger and stronger and faster? Yeah, but the quarterbacks are not. Mm -mm. No, they're not. No, they're not. Another quarterback who has, you know, passed on that probably could have played in that era um, is um, Steve McNair, but he's gone. Now, along with that, let me see, I'll tell you, I gave a top five. I said um, uh, Joe Montana, Terry Bradshaw, Dan Marino, and then after him, I would put Doug Williams. Um, uh, that would be uh, who I would call my top. Matter of fact, that's only four quarterbacks, I think. Uh, it's kind of hard to get in there. I guess you could put Unitas in there at number five because he, he was he was a bad dude and then stall back in there at six. But, you know, I, I know many of you don't even know these names I'm talking about, but the only way you're going to be able to comprehend what I'm saying is if you go back and you look. Just go back. Go back and look at um some old film footage and see how those people played football. I mean, if you never heard of Dick Buckus or Lester Hayes uh, or, or any of these people, man, you, you don't even know what football really is. If you don't, you never heard of Lawrence Taylor, whoo, mercy, you, you have no idea of what football was. I'm telling you, these guys played it and boy, did they play it. But anyway, hey, I didn't spend enough time on this and this woman's getting on my nerves. 
Uh, Y'all all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I just thought I'd answer that since it was asked for me. And it, by, besides, it's, it's something off of the beaten path. And let me cut this woman off. I got to cut her off. I can't take it. But it's something definitely off the beaten path for what I normally would do as far as um, doing videos. But I guess it's good for, for entertainment and comedy. But after all, it is my opinion. It's my top five and not yours. And you ask. Show them have a good day.